What's good guys, welcome to another video and as you can see from the title of this video today we're going to be talking about how to tap into your higher self. In this video I'm going to practically explain you step by step on how to actually do this. I'm not going to make this a woo woo video and I'm not going to talk about the mystical higher self. I'm going to be bringing you through a step by step process that took me years to figure out and that has helped me go through feeling absolutely pathetic, absolutely shit every single day to now waking up happy every single day. Whatever Whatever is happening outside in the world no longer has an effect on my internal states and I simply want to show you with this video that this state is going to be possible for everyone. We can become so much happier and so much more fulfilled through doing the inner work guys. So once again in this video I'm going to bring you through all the steps, realizations and techniques you need in order to effortlessly tap into your higher self. So before we're going to start off let's actually explain what I mean with higher self. What I mean with higher self, guys, is that you naturally feel happy. Because let me tell you this, guys, and all the spiritual sages and many enlightened teachers have already realized this. What they all say, what they all point to, is that your natural state is happiness. Your natural state is joy. And this happiness, right, we all look for in the outer worlds, is not the real happiness you want. What you want is a happiness that is permanent, right? And you might think, is that even possible? Permanent happiness? Oh, that's BS. We all feel shit sometimes. Let me tell you guys that if you do the inner work, you can pretty much feel good every single time because you start to change the relationship you start to have with your negative emotions. So that is what I mean with higher self. Your natural state is joy. So as you guys can see, I put three different categories down. First of all, letting go then forgiveness and then two types of thoughts, right? So in letting go, we're going to be talking about the technique on how to actually let go of your lower emotions, your lower thoughts, the thoughts that don't feel as good and naturally climb up the ladder until you get to a point where you just wake up happy. And if someone will ask you, why are you happy? You don't feel happy because something is happening in your life. You don't feel happy because you just got a promotion or you're traveling, right? This is the ego happiness. This is the short-lived happiness we're talking about. And this is what the majority of people continue to chase for the rest of their life. It's short-term happiness and outcomes, but it will never give you any fulfillment. So you wake up, someone will ask you, why are you so happy, brother? I don't know. I'm just happy. Why would I not be happy? I'm alive. Or the answer could be, because life is good. Because God is good. There is no specific reason that you're happy. You're just happy. And this is very much possible, guys. Your default setting is going to become happiness, peace, love, and joy. Who doesn't want that, right? So guys, I'm going to take you through every single step. First step to understand and to practice in order to truly reach this point where you just feel happy because you're alive. We got to go through letting go. We need to understand how to deal with negative thoughts and negative emotions and mainly negative emotions because emotions are the root of your thoughts. When you have thoughts, your thoughts are linked to a specific emotion. So instead of going to the thoughts, you just want to dive straight into the emotion. And this is exactly how to do it, right? So first of all, what you need to cultivate is more awareness. What you want to be doing is throughout your day, you just want to tap into your current state. How am I feeling now? You can even turn on an alarm every single hour and just tap into your current state. States. Hey, am I feeling fearful? Am I feeling happy? What is going on within myself? Right? This is why we start to cultivate awareness. Most people never do this. Most people grab their phone and constantly distract the body out of the world and they never really tap into what's going on within. But once you start to realize that within, going within is where all the gifts are, you want to go inside, right? So that is step number one. Step number two is that whenever you feel a negative emotion, let's say you become aware of, hey, I feel fearful now. I feel anxiety. The first thing you want to do is completely accept it. I feel fearful and that is fine. What do we normally do? Unconsciously, what we do is we resist the fact that we feel anxious. We resist the fact that we feel sadness, but whatever you resist will persist. So instead, just fully accept the fact that at this moment, let's say you feel a lot of sadness. It's okay to feel sad. Your acceptance of the sadness already relinquishes a lot of suffering from this emotion right? You can actually be okay with feeling sad. You can actually enjoy feeling sad, right? It's completely fine. So next to that, you want to release complete resistance to this whole emotion, right? Let go, let go of what you're feeling. Just dare to feel it, dare to move through it. You can even talk to the emotion. Give me more. It's okay. Show yourself. I want to see more of you. Give me more. Give me more. Right? It's the opposite of what we have been trained to do. What we have been trained to do is that whenever we feel a negative emotion, what we do is we run away from it. We distract ourselves. We socialize. We go on TikTok, on Instagram. 
right? As you can see, and if you look at the majority of people, right, that's not really working out, is it? So we might want to find a different way on how to actually deal with this. So how you want to be dealing with this, if you truly want to create lasting happiness, guys, is to release all the resistance that is there and fully accept the fact that you're currently feeling this way. Feel what it's like. How does it feel in your body? You feel anxiety? A lot of anxiety is always here, right? It's placed in the throat. It's like someone is grabbing you by the throat. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? Go in it, go feel that feeling, right? Because you actually feeling it allows the emotion to move through your body instead of you suppressing it back down. So this is how you slowly start to let go, guys. So you want to do this. You want to feel the emotion until it runs out of fuel. The way you can see every single emotion is a car with a certain amount of fuel. Whenever you suppress it, whenever you try to push it away, whenever you resist it, what you're doing is you're fueling the car. You're putting gas in the car. The emotion starts to become stronger, you see? The emotion starts to get more fuel and it's gonna come back more and more and more. So what you wanna be doing is the exact opposite, right? In order to empty the car of fuel so it no longer comes back into your awareness, is to fully accept it. Accept that it's there, feel it through. And what you will realize is that every single emotion will come and go. You can see the emotion as the clouds, right? Clouds, they come and they go, they come and they go. Some clouds are very short and very quick, right? Because there's a lot of wind. But other clouds, right, they are big and they are stormy and they are gray and they just stay there. It's rainy and cloudy for maybe days, right? But that is what it takes. And what you will notice over time is that it will go again. And the beauty is, guys, is that once you do this again and again, this cloud, this car is going to come back at some point, but with a lot less fuel, less energy. So it's not as powerful anymore because you've already faced the biggest part of this emotion, of this pain. Whenever it comes back, it's not as scary anymore. And over time, guys, the emotion is going to lose power over you. And what you will notice over time, you will naturally start to feel happier because you're letting go of all the baggage that is always suppressed within yourself. You're finally letting it go. And what it feels like, guys, over time, feels as if you've literally lost weight, but it's metaphysical weight. A lot of weight has been lifted off your shoulders and you feel... Ah, oh, you feel like that. You feel expansive, you feel open, you feel naturally, right? You start to feel love. Naturally, you start to feel happiness and you're not even trying. Yes, you have just stepped into your natural state, guys. All right, guys, so the next step on how to reach your higher self and stay there permanently is the following. It's forgiveness. So for me to easily explain this, I want to give you a little metaphor. The way you can see your lower self, your ego, your negative thoughts, your negative emotions, see it as a vampire that thrives in the dark. Right? It thrives in the darkness, it gets energy from the darkness. The way you can see forgiveness, guys, is the light that is shining on the vampire. So what happens to the vampire when he goes out into the light? It will die, it will burn, it will evaporate, you see? This is the way you can see forgiveness, guys, because guilt, shame and apathy have no place in your awareness when it has been forgiven. Let me repeat that. Guilt, shame, and apathy have no place in your awareness when it has been forgiven. So the first step, guys, and this is easier said than done, you want to forgive everyone, every single individual that has ever done something, right? I'm, I'm doing this because it's not that I've literally done something to you. You want to forgive them all. And you also want to forgive yourself, right? And this is easier said than done. But guys, if you are still resenting certain people for what they've done to you, maybe in the past you resent your boss, you resent your friend that hasn't done this, you resent this person, you want to forgive them. Why do you want to forgive them? What do you want? Do you want to have an high ego and you want to live in this ego-based consciousness continuously? Or do you want peace and happiness? If you want peace and happiness, you need to be okay with actually lowering your ego. Because unconsciously, what does resentment and judgment do? Resentment and judgment feeds the ego. Why does it feed the ego? Because it creates a subtle form of superiority, a subtle form of me versus you. It creates separation between you and the individual, and it will naturally get you in a victim mode. He or she has done this to me. He has hurt my feelings. He has done this. He has done that right? What you're doing is you're playing the victim. What you're doing is that you are placing your own power in someone else's shoes, in the outer world. You become reactive to the outer world. Guys, if you truly want peace and happiness, you need to be able to forgive everyone, including yourself. And if this is feeling very uncomfortable, please realize that this discomfort is coming from your ego that tries to stay alive in your mind. Because once again, what happens when you forgive certain individuals? 
right? You no longer have this certain image. You no longer have this story you can talk about, right? This victim story that will unconsciously run in your mind. Once again, what happens? Forgiveness comes into play. This story is going to go. But sometimes it's hard to let go of stories and identities. But this is part of the game, guys. You have to let go of your old story in order to truly tap into your higher self. So here's a great perception you can take into your day to day to truly cultivate more inner peace and to make forgiveness easier. There is no world outside of you. I repeat, there is no world outside of you. This comes from the holy text, A Course in Miracles, which dives very deep into your own mind. There is no world outside of you. If you think certain people have done something to you, that's actually not the case. Hard to believe, right? And even hard to accept though, isn't it? Right? You are just being a victim to yourself. They haven't done anything to you. It's your reaction towards that individual. They cannot do anything to you. Let's say someone is very angry at you and you know it's unfair, but they are very angry. They are selfish and they are judging you. What happens is that you now judge them. They, you're like, oh, he's such a selfish prick. Look what I've done for him. I've done all these things for him, right? That is you placing your own power outside of you, right? You are judging this individual and you are saying, this individual is doing something to me now, right? This individual is not treating me fairly. And obviously when someone is doing that, it doesn't mean you just have to be like, okay, fine, bro. I'm going to continue to hang out with you or whatever. No, like have the power to step away from that, but in a forgiving way. Right? So the perception you can cultivate in a situation like this is the following. My brother is in pain. He is angry. His awareness, his state of consciousness is filled with anger. And he's not actually angry at me because I realize nothing can be taken personally. He is just angry with himself. Because the fact that he's angry at me doesn't say anything about me. Because you realize that the world is a reflection of your inner state. So whenever someone else is doing something to you, you automatically realize it has nothing to do with you, but the perception of that specific individual. When you can clearly see that, judgment becomes impossible. You can see, first of all, its futility. And next to that, the fact that it's only creating turbulence and unhappiness in your own mind. Once you see that clearly, it becomes impossible to judge. You don't want to judge people because you want to stay happy. So why would you ever judge someone? You just feel empathy for this individual. You just wish them the best. So step number three, guys, in order to tap into your higher self effortlessly, it's going to be the following. This is a perception I want to give to you. There are only two types of thoughts. Really, it's really that simple. There are thoughts from your lower self. These thoughts feel contracting. They feel as if your awareness, your feeling, right, it's contracting. It's like in some way. Then the second type of thought is the thoughts of the higher self. And these thoughts feel expanding. That's how simple you can make it. And what I want to tie into this, guys, to truly understand how to deal with this, is that you have an emotional guidance system. Very simply explained, guys. Once you understand this, guys, and I will explain you in a very simple way in a bit, you will start to understand how to navigate through your emotions and always choose the expanding emotion over the contracting emotion. So guys, what your emotional guidance system is, is you can see that's the following. We have a radar in our minds. Whenever we have a contracting thought, what this means, right? You feel contraction in your body. Your body is saying, Hey brother, you are perceiving reality incorrectly. You need to change your perception because you are not seeing reality as it is. So whenever you feel any type of suffering, whenever you feel any guilt about yourself, you're not really seeing the way you really are. Because once again, your lower self is an illusion, an illusion of your ego, an illusion of the lower self. So the reason there's a lower and higher self is because we need polarity in order to even understand what a higher self is. Because if there wouldn't be a lower self, if there wouldn't be contracting thoughts in this current human experience, we wouldn't be able to understand understand what love feels like, what joy feels like, right? If we were just joyful, we wouldn't know we would be joyful and there would be no lessons to learn in this current lifetime. So this is why we have two types of thoughts in the human experience. So whenever you have a contracting thought, which you can feel in your body, in your state, and you become aware of it, as we talked about here, when you become aware throughout the day of how you're feeling. So this is important. You need to become aware. Once you become aware, you have a contracting thought, your emotional guidance system is telling you Hey brother, you are perceiving reality and yourself incorrectly. It's time for you to change your perception. Because let me tell you this guys, your lower self is an illusion. Your lower self isn't the real you. You are your higher self. This is the natural you, right? This is natural to you. This is something you naturally are. So whenever you feel an expanding thought, whenever you feel expansion within yourself, 
That is your emotional guidance system saying, hey, brother, you are perceiving yourself correctly. Continue to perceive yourself this way because this is who you really are. It's really that simple, guys. Whenever you feel contracting within yourself and whenever you feel expansion within yourself, you are perceiving yourself correctly. So this, guys, this guidance system can truly guide you through constantly changing your perception whenever you feel a negative thought or a negative emotion. Just understand that you are not really those thoughts and not those emotions. The feelings you're feeling is your body just telling you, hey, brother, you're perceiving yourself incorrectly. You are your higher self, but it's your job to navigate through this, right, and change your perception in order to get here. Because that is how you learn. That is how you grow. So guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.